I came across the practice in my time at Cambridge University in the late 1960s. I went to a talk at the Cambridge University Buddhist Society and I found it very interesting so I went along to the meditation class also run by the society. Now this was in the late 60s and there were a lot of flower children around and there were some pretty flowery gurus too. So I was a bit surprised when I turned up at the meditation class and found that the chap teaching it called Nai Boonman Punya Thero was a small Thai gentleman wearing a very traditional English three-piece suit with shined black shoes. To be honest he looked rather more like a bank manager than he did a meditation teacher. I found this oddly reassuring. I also found it reassuring that he didn't talk much about Buddhism. In fact during the meditation class he focused almost entirely on the problem of stilling the mind. After hearing about Nai Bhuman for many years I first got to meet him at the opening of the Shrine Hall in 1996 along with many others. Probably the most memorable thing about that meeting was that Nai Bhuman introduced us to a new way of doing the settling. But something else stuck in my mind and that was that in the group sittings instead of our customary 30 minutes he only gave us 15 minutes per sitting. Interestingly, in spite of this just being 15 minutes, the energy produced from those group sittings seemed to be enough. short recollection of my boonman. Once on a retreat I went in for a report with him and he just looked at me and he said you need a lot of equanimity in Bangkok traffic. Hello Nye Boomin and Dang, it's Dermot here from Northern Ireland. We've had the great pleasure of your company here a couple of times over the years. Each time you took a, a week's practice at Benburg Prairie. And after one of them we had a few days to spare so we decided we we're going to do some sightseeing. Uh, we called it a place called Carica Reed, it's a rope bridge. About 20 metres long and about 30 metres high above the sea, out to a small peninsula. We got up to the, the rope bridge, I watched Nye Boomin in front of me walking across, not holding on to the, the rails, the rope rails, but both hands on top of his head like this, holding nothing. I thought, wow, impressive. So I tried to do the same, coming behind him. But a couple of times, I had to catch the rope. He never, the whole way across, perfectly with the hands on his head, very impressive. On the return back over the bridge, after a few minutes on the island, I was going first, Nai Boomin next, then Dang, then my daughter Alice in the rear. So I thought I'd learned by not pressing too hard, just lightly holding my head, it could aid the balance and walked across. And I was so impressed with myself that I managed to get across doing this, turned around to watch, and there Nai Boomin was coming, walking like this, ever so casually across the bridge. I thought, there's no beating this man at all, is there? Nai Boomin, I can't express how grateful I am for your trips here to Ireland and the wonderful gift that you brought to these islands. Nothing, nothing to compare with it. And Dang, I'd like to thank you very much for looking after so well, looking after so well, our great teacher. Thank you both. As regards to teaching 
most memorable for me would be the seven factors of awakening and uh, it being related to the day in which you were born and what that means to you and how to develop and you used to say well which is your favorite which which one do you prefer and he used to say i like equanimity he liked equanimity there are a number of things he has said that keep coming back to me one is his phrase when which he's used a number of times to me in reports is quite normal um, and it is remarkable how reassuring normalness is i remember so many of your teachings, so many memorable teachings. For example, I remember a teaching about the four Brahma Viharas. I remember you saying, keep one in your pocket, keep the other three in your handbag, develop and, and encourage one, then add one or two of the others and develop and encourage those. And then, for example, talking about equanimity, when you are offered tea or coffee and you can truly say no to both of those, you'll know you are developing equanimity. I think the biggest teaching for, for Bunu is his presence. And it's known that he taught quite intuitively, something that I, I have a preference for, that intuitive um, feeling that he had. It was at Green Street, likely to have been just before Bunu's auspicious 72nd birthday, when Deng and I were going to decorate a celebration cake. We had to do this in secret. At the time, I occupied the downstairs room. Deng is a brilliant artist and can mold anything from edible marzipan. So we set to work. Soon I could hear Boomwin's voice in the corridor. As the handle rattled, I jumped up to keep the door shut, but felt the pressure of an enormous force on the other side that I could not resist. What happened next I cannot remember, but without further mishap, the top of the cake became a brightly coloured landscape with a palm tree and a little monkey climbing up it. Hello, Nye Boomman, and uh, a very happy birthday to you. I'd like to thank you for all your teaching over the years. And in particular, I'd like to thank you for the little expressions that you use, which often come into my mind 
at times that I find very useful. It's been uh, very helpful to me. I was thinking that reaching the age of 90 is, uh, is very special, but the more I think about it, it's quite normal, quite normal. And I hope you get more experience of it. It's good enough. And above all, I hope that you will be well and happy more and more and more and more. Eat more, die soon. Eat less, die slow. Hello Nye Boonman and Dang, I'd like to just express my gratitude for bringing the Samata practice over here to the UK and how much it helped me um, over a period of time uh, of reasonably um, disciplined work to um, find my, my way um, out of a hole that I dug for myself. And though I don't do a Samatha practice these days, the Samatha and the, whole, the peer group, um, which have been so helpful for me, are still very much um, a part of my fabric and continue to sustain me. And the Samatha provided me with a foundation uh, from which I was eventually uh, able to find uh, a reasonable amount of peace within myself, to be happy with myself, to be happy uh, with the world in general. Another phrase is if you say you want more happiness, I will give you more suffering. And this, um, for me, this has pointed towards um, the realization that it's through understanding and learning from suffering that we become happier. I remember on a course that I was on with Naibum and he once addressed a group of us sitting in the upstairs shrine room and he said, what do you want? Do you want to increase your happiness or do you want to reduce your suffering? And somebody is equipped Oh, we want to do both. And I heard him say to himself, clever, but not sincere. So it seemed to me that he was saying it has to be one or the other. And this was something about our core motivation for the practice. The fact that he's introduced 
uh, very clearly the instructions for the practice uh, in a very concise manner and that really also bringing into the Rupa practice, stating that it is a Rupa practice and also bringing in our Rupa practice and giving us uh, free reign to explore that. He was also very keen on us doing a meta practice. So counting uh, each meta in to your age plus one. I don't know why it was always plus one. So whatever you are, breathe in meta, breathe out meta to everyone else. Uh, up to the number of your age plus plus one. These are just a few of the teachings. Anumodana Nai Boomin, thank you and a very happy birthday. I wish you a very happy, pleasant birthday, Nai Boomin. And you too, Danny. Take care. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. From uh, your dear friend, Roger. My thanks to Nai Boonman for sparking off investigation. I wish Boonman and Dang a very happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm.